morning and welcome to our service on Hucklow Bears. This is the service that celebrates the Send a Child to Hucklow Fund. Let's begin as we always do with the statement of values we share. We welcome all who seek the meaning of life and who believe that human spirituality is wider than any one tradition and deeper than any one set of opinions. With respect to our Christian origins, we seek to explore all truths from all sources. Our fellowship gives us strength and encouragement in daily living. Let's light our chalice. So, here are our opening words. We gather today to rejoice in teddy bears, our comforters and our friends, our soft toys and softer moments. We gather today to give thanks for the comfort of an old friend. And we light the chalice for all the hopes and dreams which have been spilled into the ear of a teddy bear. We light it for the tears and fears our teddy bears have absorbed. May our flame be a promise never to treat lightly the gifts of a beloved toy. So people decided to have a collection of teddy bears, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, but it really wouldn't be possible, I think, to have a service about teddy bears without mentioning possibly the most famous teddy bear of all time, uh, or at least one of them. Um, it occurs to me that if you were to try and decide that, trying to decide between Paddington and Pooh would be quite a difficult choice as to which one is the most popular. Um, but this is the uh, Teo of Pooh. Uh, it's an excerpt from that book, uh, which uses the wisdom of Winnie the Pooh to talk about spiritual enlightenment. So this is a bit about Pooh, or Pooh. Here we are about to try to explain Pooh the uncarved block. In the classic Taoist manner, we won't try too hard or explain too much, because that would only confuse things, and because it would leave the impression that it was all only an intellectual idea that could be left on the intellectual level and ignored. Then you could say, well, this idea is all very nice, but what does it amount to? Pop. I'll just pop my boat there, look there. Um, so instead we will try to show what it amounts to in various ways. Poo, by the way, is pronounced sort of like poo, but without so much oo, like the sound you make when blowing a bug off your arm on a warm summer day. Before we bring in our resident expert for a few illuminating remarks, let's explain something. The essence of the principle of the uncarved block is that things in their original simplicity contain their own natural power. Power that is easily spoiled and lost when that simplicity is changed. For the written character, poo, the typical Chinese dictionary will give a definition of natural, simple, plain and honest. Pu is composed of two separate characters combined. The first, the radical or root meaning one, is that for tree or wood. The second, the phonetic or sound giving one, is the character for dense growth or thicket. So from tree in a thicket or wood not cut comes the meaning of things in their natural state. What is generally represented in English versions of Taoist writing as the uncarved block. The basic Taoist principle applies not only to things in their natural beauty and function, but to people as well, or bears which brings us to Pooh, the very epitome of the uncarved block. After all, what is the most appealing thing about Winnie the Pooh? What else but simplicity? The simplicity of the uncarved block. And the nicest thing about that simplicity is its useful wisdom, the what is there to eat variety, wisdom you can get at. Considering that, let's have Pooh describe the nature of the uncarved block. All right, Pooh, what can you tell us about the uncarved block? The what? asked Pooh, sitting up suddenly and opening his eyes. The uncarved block, you know. Ah. 
What do you have to say about it? I didn't do it, said Pooh. So we will now have a moment of prayer. And I have some words to introduce our prayer. We'll have a minute of silent prayer uh, and then we'll have a musical interlude. So here are our words. We rejoice in the world of the child. We rejoice in the comfort of the wise teddy bear. We give thanks for innocence and comfort, for reassurance and security. We spend time in our own prayers and thoughts. May our bears be for us the comfort we need. May the silent prayers be heard and may they be answered. May it be so. And let's take a moment for silent prayer. President Theodore Roosevelt, whose nickname was Teddy, although apparently he didn't much like it. Like many men of the time, he enjoyed hunting and was on a bear hunt in November 1902. However, he and his hunting party could find no game until eventually some of them managed to chase down a small bear using dogs. They tied the exhausted bear to the tree, then asked if the president would like to shoot it. Roosevelt declined and replied, I draw the line, commenting later, if I, if I had shot that little fellow, I couldn't look my own sons in the face again. Toymaker Morris Mitchum, who lived in Brooklyn at the time, heard the story and was inspired by it. He created a small model bear cub and put it in his shop window with a sign saying, Teddy's Bear. At the same time, the German toy manufacturers, Steiff, also began, began creating stuffed toy bears, apparently by coincidence, transatlantic communication at the time was not good, but the market was there. The bears were shipped to America for sale and became so popular that in 1907, John Walter Bratton wrote a famous song, which we heard at the start, The Teddy Bear's Picnic. Going back to much earlier times, there have been toys of some form or other for as long as there have been humans. Toys have been found at any number of archaeological digs, and at the time of Jesus, children from wealthier families would have dolls, wooden horses with wheels and yo-yos. It's perhaps a little bit fanciful to wonder whether Jesus himself, as a woodworker, would have made toys at some point, we don't have any proof of that, but certainly many toys, especially for poorer children, were made by nearby adults from whatever materials were available, and whittled wooden toys, especially toy soldiers, horses or dogs, or whistles and spinning tops, were quite common. Perhaps the closest reference to toys in the Bible is St Paul's famous line from 1 Corinthians 13. When I was a child, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became an adult, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror, dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I brought. Some people brought their little children to Jesus so he could touch them, but his followers told them to stop. When Jesus saw this, he was angry and said to them, let the little children come to me. Don't stop them, because the, the kingdom of God belongs to people who are like these children. I tell you the truth, you must accept the kingdom of God as if you were a little child, or you will never enter it. Then Jesus took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. It's tempting at this point to diverge into a discussion of whether Christianity as we know it was the creation of Jesus or St. Paul, which is a very old debate. Fortunately, I shall stay on the topic of teddy bears. As our own value state, people certainly loved their children. They were regarded as less socially important than adults. For Jesus to embrace them and tell his adult male disciples that they should seek to emulate the children was quite a radical act. I believe he was encouraging his followers to try to be as open to the world as children are, to look at it without preconceptions, so that the new world he was trying to show people could be created. In other words, perhaps to follow the path of the uncarved block, since Winnie the Pooh, as we know, is quite magnificently childlike. Yet at the same time, in our time as in the time of Jesus, we know that life is very, very difficult for many children. 
a little for children in need in our own country. One of the initiatives of the SAC Fund has been to collect teddies for children visiting the centre who do not have a bear of their own. Here's an excerpt from their report from 2023. The Hutlow Bears are kindly provided by the congregation at the Unitarian Old Chapel, Great Hutlow, for children to take home continue to delight. They are spruced up, labelled and specially selected for each child by Anne, the centre's housekeeper. One child even brought theirs back to Hutlow this year. They say, Remember what a great time you had as a child with your first teddy bear? Recall a holiday in Hutlow? We have started to provide the first few cohorts of teddy bears to the staff at the Nightingale Centre. Each of the bears are labelled and tagged and placed on the bed of the children who visit the Nightingale Centre as a part of Send a Child to Hutlow. The tag we place on the teddy bear says, I am a formerly loved bear. I have no home, I have no name, and I have no friend. Please take me home, give me a name, and be my friend. The response thus far has been overwhelming. You can see a picture of the Hucklow Bears on the front of the Order of Service. To emulate Jesus, who rejected the children should be seen and not heard values of his time, to embrace children and show them love and care. And with that in mind, let us say once more a prayer of thanks for our bears. Those companions of our younger days, who many of us keep to our lives as a source of love and comfort. May we all be as constant in our care for those we love as a friendly teddy bear. Always willing to listen and always there for a hug. May it be so. As we have a little time, um, I have an extra reading, The Teddy Bear Lady. Most of the people at Chicago Children's Hospital did not know her name. They just knew her as the sweet elderly lady in the red suit who wanted to make sure that every sick child had a teddy bear to hug and caress. She kept bringing the stuffed animals purchased with her own money to give to sick children, and that is why she was simply called the Teddy Bear Lady. Her name was Gladys Holm, a retired secretary for an insurance company. He lived alone in a tiny apartment. It wasn't that she could afford no better place, although no one except her solicitor and stockbroker knew that she was actually quite wealthy. idea that this lady delivering the teddy bears to sick children had such wealth. As they began to piece together more of her life story, they discovered something else. They learned that the teddy bears were really a ruse. She gave away teddy bears to learn more about the financial resources of the families of the children. When she learned that the parents did not have enough health insurance or money to cover the expenses, she very quietly took care of the bills. And before we have our benediction, let's have a poem by A. A. Milne, Teddy Bear. A bear, however hard he tries, goes tubby without exercise. Our teddy bear is short and fat, which is not too as fat as me. Then with a still more moving sigh, I mean, he said, as fat as I. Now Teddy, as was only right, slept in the ottoman at night, and with him crowded in as well, more animals than I can tell. Not only these, but books and things, such as a kind relation brings. Old tales of once upon a time, and history we told in rhyme. One night it happened that he took a peep at an old picture book, whereon he came across by chance a picture of a king of France, a stoutish man, and down below these words, King Louis so and so, nicknamed the handsome, that years ago he might have been, for now he felt a slight misgiving, is Louis so and so still living? Fashions and beauty have a way of altering from day to day. Is handsome Louis with us yet? Unfortunately, I forget. Next morning, nose to window pane, the doubt occurred to him again. One question hammered in his head. Is he alive or is he dead? Thus nose to pane, the bear pondered, but the lattice window loosely shut, swung open and with one startled O, our teddy disappeared below. 
There happened to be passing by a plump man with a twinkly eye, who, seeing Teddy in the street, raised him politely to his feet and murmured kindly in his ear soft words of comfort and of cheer. Well, well, allow me, not at all. Tut, tut, a very nasty fall. Our Teddy answered not a word. It's doubtful if he even heard. Our bear could only look and look the stout man in the picture book. To be a comfort to those who have no comfort, to care for those who are alone. We dim the flame, but not the spirit of our community and fun and love that is here among it's us. So simple, oh. Until we next meet, we carry this flame in our hearts and are reminded of it by our bears. Amen.